I'm grateful that uh, to have this chance uh, to speak here uh, in this very uh, very nicely put uh, uh, seminar by Metrans and uh, thank uh, the help uh, from uh, Janet and Vicky and uh, and uh, your very helpful students um, very nicely uh, uh, put uh, uh, sort of setting for me to um, sort of uh, um, share with you my uh, recent research on Beijing's um, transportation management uh, and uh, its impact on air quality. Let me sort of start by uh, just uh, saying this is a uh, collaborative uh, work. As we all know, um, working in uh, developing countries with uh, uh, on, on policy and planning topics, oftentimes the, the biggest barrier is data and a local, of course, local context. Uh, um, and fortunately, uh, for this study, I was working with uh, uh, Professor Sichi Zheng. Um, he's a professor of uh, real estate in uh, Tsinghua University, one of China's best. And uh, her uh, PhD student, uh, uh, Sun Cong, or Cong Sun, uh, this project was developed uh, um, while Tong was a visiting, short-term visiting student at UCLA with me. And uh, eventually we were, uh, we were fortunate uh, to be able to dig enough data uh, from temporarily available and uh, uh, different database uh, of the government um, so that we could uh, finish this one uh, to join a, a small group of empirical studies looking at how driving restrictions may affect uh, air quality uh, and, and, and other aspects of urban transportation. So a little bit uh, um, background. Um, many of you, um, uh, the price score is very international, so I, I, I trust that many of you have the knowledge that uh, China's growth has uh, uh, fundamental impacts on almost every dimensions that uh, you know, we talk about in this, in this school. And uh, I will need to single out uh, first uh, the rapid, rapid economic growth and urbanization. Um, China, uh, for the past uh, 30, 35 years, China was urbanizing primarily by migrating rural migrants to urban settings because China has this urban family planning, family uh, birth control policy. So primarily by migrating rural migrants to cities at a scale of uh, more than 10 million uh, per year for around 30 years. So that uh, raised China's urbanization rate from uh, around 20% uh, around uh, 1980 to uh, more than 50% uh, today. So that's a uh, and so we, we look at transportation. Naturally, you will find people are making longer trips and uh, people are making more trips. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, because of that and because people can afford, uh, lots of the travel tra uh, trips are made by fossil fuel-based uh, modes instead of uh, bicycle or walking, which um, China has been famous for for a long time. And associated with that is the, the, the cost of agglomeration, that is, um, you know, congestion and pollution. Um, uh, in particular, Chinese cities are, are sort of a, the, the proportion of land dev uh, devoted to, to road is, is low compared to, um, to other sort of uh, uh, to developing, uh, developed uh, countries, much lower, and the density is much higher. Uh, large cities uh, if you compare China and the U.S., it's about a 10 times difference in average population density. If you compare China to Europe, it's about five, four times. So that's a big difference. And so, so, so controlling traffic and uh, the negative consequences uh, is, is naturally sort of a, a, a very uh, important uh, uh, thing to, to do by cities. And Beijing happens to be China China's uh, capital and uh, one of the largest city, currently more than 20 million residents. And um, it's, it's, um, 
also most motorized uh, large city in China. So it has a very high car ownership rate, um, currently around more than 50 vehicles per 100 households. So that's, a, that's very high uh, in China. And uh, if you compare the number of vehicles, uh, it's about uh, 200 to 250 per thousand people. Uh, compared to U.S., more than 800. Compared to Europe, around 600. So um, it's, there's still a gap. And if you believe China is still growing, uh, people's pockets are getting deeper, so they still can afford more vehicles. Uh, the question is that, uh, you know, how uncomfortable the city can be if you have so many vehicles. And mode share, currently, if you exclude walking from all the modes people use daily, uh, in particular for commute, um, uh, driving um, uh, accounts for about a third of the modes uh, people use to go to work in Beijing. That's, that's also very high in China's large cities. And in terms of air pollutants, uh, which is the dependent variable in, our, uh, uh, in, in, in this talk, um, there, there are many studies, but the, actually it's quite difficult for scientists to actually to figure out an exact portion of pollutants from uh, local automobiles uh, for many reasons um, um, that I will talk a little bit more later. Uh, but the general understanding is that uh, uh, more than 50% uh, of air pollutants are from fossil fuel burning. Uh, the main two main sources are vehicles and uh, and heating primarily uh, during winter time from November to uh, to March. And uh, um, Beijing uh, has uh, made a lot of efforts to control its um, to control the, uh, the its traffic congestion and and pollution. Um, one of the uh, uh, more sort of uh, interesting ones is the local driving condition uh, restrictions uh, that uh, started uh, about uh, four years ago. And uh, the reason it's very interesting is that uh, um, it's the first major uh, command and control type of policy um, uh, in terms of managing demand. It's not tax, it's not uh, uh, subsidy, it's not uh, um, other sort of uh, other, other uh, incentives. It's, uh, it's about uh, sort of uh, who can and who cannot um, sort of by direct control and enforcement uh, of the police uh, in the city. And it's large scale. It pretty much includes everybody in the city. Uh, more actually more strict uh, on, on government vehicles. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, and uh, and the, the goal, uh, stated goal, is to ki kill um, two birds, uh, one congestion and the other is air, 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 air pollution uh, with this one policy. Of course, um, you know, added to uh, a portfolio of other uh, policy choices. So, um, <clears throat> so the background of this research, why we still need to do this research is that uh, although there have been some examples of uh, driving restrictions, and, uh, and uh, um, interesting uh, studies, but the number of studies are, are quite small. Um, so sort of definitely published once uh, uh, at, uh, at the time that we started our study was under half a dozen, uh, including working papers. But today it might be a dozen also. Um, so the, the, the issue is that you cannot uh, find uh, an agreement among among different studies about uh, how driving restrictions are going to affect uh, air quality. Um, the usual suspect of why such sort of strict uh, policy doesn't work, the usual suspect is the complicated uh, sort of a behavioral response, such as people may buy a second car and the second car might be dirtier, um, or, or other, other types of uh, sort of a, uh, behaviors if your if your policy is only sort of uh, restricting driving uh, in certain hours, then people naturally can sort of uh, wait until the uh, after after it to, to drive. And uh, 
there have been also um, interesting studies um, about uh, you know uh, methodolo uh, methodology uh, of of the study, and uh, most of the famous method of studying this type of policy is called a regression discontinuity, basically by comparing right before and after uh, the policy, what uh, happens to air quality, and, and associated if you have data on traffic behavior, et cetera. Uh, but uh, the, recently, there have been uh, some sort of uh, uh, disagreement on whether this really is a reliable, robust way to, uh, to infer the policy uh, uh, impact. And so to, to improve our understanding, and particular uh, in, in, in China, uh, where uh, motorization is uh, moving forward at a very uh, high speed, and currently, of course, China is the largest uh, market in the world for motor vehicles. And, uh, and the projection is that uh, in just a few years, probably two to three years, China would be the largest uh, market in the world for cars. Okay, so motor vehicles already, uh, but cars, China is still behind the U.S. as, uh, as the second largest uh, market. So what we did was try to sort of uh, improve the data and try to use alternative, uh, potentially more robust method um, uh, with all the limitations I will talk about of our study um, to, to, work on this, uh, to work on this issue. So uh, a very quick uh, recap of the, of the studies um, um, evaluating driving restrictions, air quality impact. Uh, the, the most famous uh, such policy is in Mexico City uh, in 1989. Hoy no se sorry for my Spanish. Um, <laughs> And there have been uh, a few studies um, by the World Bank people, um, by uh, the, uh, uh, economists uh, um, uh, currently in Berkeley, and uh, uh, by uh, people in Chile, uh, very uh, Salas, um, Christian Salas, a very, uh, a, a, a very good, smart uh, PhD student currently in, in Chicago. Um, um, and uh, then there are some uh, working papers uh, by people in UC Davis, um, uh, looking at uh, uh, different schemes in Sao Paulo, Bogotá, and uh, of course uh, in, in Beijing and Tianjin, uh, in particular during the Olympic Games. These later studies are not published uh, uh, because they use the same method as Davis' famous 2008 uh, uh, Journal of Political Economy paper, and, uh, and uh, this study, this working paper, was later published in 2013 uh, in, a, in a different uh, bundle of, of results, but uh, essentially the result is the same for his uh, critique on the method uh, used by David, um, uh, Davis. So Mexico City, quickly, uh, Davis used uh, this regression discontinuity method primarily by collecting and portraying the high frequency hourly uh, uh, air quality concentration of different pollutants, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ozone, uh, and look at, at the right before and after the, uh, the HNC policy, Hoi no Sakula uh, policy, to, um, sort of, uh, uh, to see whether this policy produced a, a, a discontinuity in the, in the concentration. And uh, this, uh, the result, of course, from his, this representative result uh, panel, you can see that uh, um, uh, there does not seem to, have to, to be a, a, a big jump uh, before and after the policy. Um, assuming the policy sort of uh, have, you know, is enforced. The key thing here I would just want to say is that uh, although um, Davis and, and uh, several later uh, studies found no improvement in air quality and no reduction. Well, this is specifically for, uh, for Mexico City in gasoline consumption and increase in transit, uh, transit use. Um, they're so, sort of, they, um, this group of studies uh, typically consider most likely uh, there were uh, very quick adaptation of the behavior uh, in terms of car ownership and driving. Uh, due to this uh, policy. And uh, <clears throat> this working paper 
uh, by uh, Christian Salas and later published uh, with, his, uh, with his advisors, Montero in particular, um, um, uh, sort of a, they, they found that uh, while replicating uh, Davis' uh, study, reasonable change in, in his model by changing the time window uh, polynomial model uh, or order and adaptation, whether you build that in or not, can dramatically alter conclusions. So he proposed that one should use more general, sort of a robust, uh, sort of a non-parametric regression discontinuity, sort of a using, uh, instead of polynomial function to fit the trend, uh, you, could, you should use uh, non-parametric uh, sort of a, mo uh, sort of a uh, fitting. Uh, he identified uh, um, 12 to 18 percent reduction in pollution due during the first uh, several months uh, after the uh, HNC and followed by a gradual rebound because of uh, people's uh, adaptation behavior. This is his result, sort of a representative result. Um, and uh, it's, he replicated the discontinuity. He found that it's the result, the, the gap is sensitive to uh, the polynomial order, if you keep the time window the same, you keep everything else the same, um, the result is not actually robust. Um, <clears throat> well, that's his method, uh, non-parametric or um, uh, results. He finds that uh, you know, this is a different time window, eight year, six year, sort of basically by looking at a different uh, time range data series, he finds that uh, the, the decrease is is uh, is there uh, sort of uh, by varying uh, if you just uh, vary different time window um, and uh, other uh, parameters of the study. So um, so the other following studies I will just highlight their Beijing work. Um, they they all follow the Davis uh, famous uh, sort of a regression discontinuity, and they found. But the problem is that uh, they disagree with each other for Beijing's case. Um, well, Beijing in, in Olympic, in 2008 Olympics game, Beijing first uh, for short term, they implemented an odd and even sort of a driving restriction. Namely, about half of the cars cannot be driven on, on, on any given work day. Um, but uh, uh, after that, Beijing changed it to one day a week type of policy, which is the same as Mexico City and, and, and many other places. So, uh, Thinsia Ling at UC Davis found that uh, odd even restriction during the Olympics associated with uh, around 40% uh, of reductions PM10 uh, concentrations. That's not a surprise because it's odd even. Uh, but uh, she found that uh, one day a week driving restriction after the Olympics has not improved air quality, uh, just as what uh, uh, Davis found. Um, Viet and, uh, and Fu, um, two scholars um, currently in China, um, <clears throat> in 2011 they had uh, another working paper uh, using the same method, but uh, uh, what they found was that uh, daily PM10 concentration fell uh, uh, nearly 20% during odd even and about 8% during one day per week. So their, their results are different because their, their polynomial uh, orders and other other uh, small differences in their, in their work. Uh, but they did find that uh, there were large drops at monitors closer to major roads. So that's a, that's a good thing to do if you have spatial, uh, you know, if you have a spatial distribution of your data. Okay, so um, the, the challenge to, 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 to study Beijing um, is, um, uh, is is this 2.7 month gap uh, between the sort of uh, uh, no, no regulation on driving, no restriction on driving, and the one day per week. Because the 2.7 month includes uh, a, a period where uh, Beijing had this Olympics game and a small time window when Beijing was considering what to do after, right after the Olympics and before. Uh, they actually implemented the post-Olympics scheme. So there's this gap, and one sort of, uh, naturally one need to sort of, uh, sort of uh, uh, cast this uh, suspicion on whether you still can use 
uh, regression discontinuity because there's no reason to believe that uh, uh, this point would be so very close to this point due to, uh, due to weather, uh, climate change, and other, other changes in, in, in the time series. Um, and uh, uh, there are lots of other policy covariates such as Beijing opened lots of subways, lines, stations, they did the BRT, they expanded their, they kept expanding their, um, their, their, uh, their, their public uh, bus system. So, and this table um, lists uh, what, what Beijing did and the, you will find that uh, this driving and ownership restrictions um, well, here it's actually just driving restrictions, odd even one day per week, uh, slightly different, uh, um, you know, after they implemented uh, for a few months. Um, th there are other things going on at the same time in, during the same period. Fare subsidy, new subway, parking fee increase, taxi fuel surcharge, uh, and other environmental policies that can directly impact air quality, uh, you know, change of factories, relocation, uh, shutdown of factories and others, gasoline price adjustments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, the 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 um, <clears throat> sort of a before after comparison uh, becomes uh, uh, impossible to do in this case, and uh, we think that's uh, that's um, that's why one has to find uh, different data uh, and a different uh, different uh, method to to do it. So this driving restrictions in Beijing is within its uh, fifth ring road. Um, it's primarily the most important part of the city. Um, it's around the, the, the area inside of the fifth ring road is comparable to New York City. It's around 700 square kilometers. So it's, it's very big. It's not just uh, the urban, the, 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 the core. It's actually the central city itself. Um, and uh, the, the interesting thing is that they alternate uh, this driving restriction uh, in the way that is, uh, that is uh, very regular. So first of all, they combine the 10 uh, numbers of the last digit of, of, a, of a driving uh, license plate. Uh, they combine 1 and 6 together, 2 and 7, 3, 8, 4, 9, 5, 10 together. And that's fixed. Okay? But they sort of uh, every about uh, 2 and 3 months, um, very regularly they rotate uh, these uh, five groups of number combinations uh, from Monday to Friday. They rotate it so that uh, you have a nice random randomness of whether you assign traffic on Friday to this group of number and that group of number. Okay, so um, Beijing does not have many monitoring stations within the fifth ring. There are uh, probably intentionally so that they can give higher weight to uh, stations outside. But there are a few of them, and what we did was simply sort of uh, to reduce the complexity of our analysis, simply average them and, uh, uh, and uh, get the daily average. This is just a variation of our study period from 2008. Uh, uh, not our, our period, but uh, it includes our period. Our period is, uh, is a little shorter than this one. Uh, this is from 2008 to um, 2011. Okay, so <clears throat> to, to tell whether this driving restriction has an impact or not on, on, the, on the air quality, um, we, ch we chose a different uh, method, and we um, thank that to the death effect. Uh, the death effect is actually just uh, because Chinese does not like uh, the number four. It's the same sound as, you know, pronounced as death. So that, uh, you know, when you're driving, you don't want to drive a car with actually with four in, in any sort of a digit. And in particular, ending with four. So namely, after you sort of, a, after you pronounce all the numbers, you end with death. Okay, that doesn't sound very good. So um, this is, and, and that gives us a, a sort of a, a interesting exogenous sort of a variation in the number of cars uh, allowed to be on the road uh, on different, uh, you know, days. And this is because four is combined with nine. And this is from uh, one of the studies we discussed. But uh, interestingly, they didn't exploit, uh, explore, uh, sort of uh, exploit this, this variation. Um, this is just a random 
uh, sort of a counting of last digit in one of the public garages. Uh, and interestingly, they still found some, uh, some, some cars. And we did another version. We didn't plot it. Uh, sort of uh, casually, we count uh, uh, vehicles in Tsinghua University um, uh, while w during the time we were writing the paper. And essentially, we find uh, uh, zero uh, cars ending with number four in Tsinghua University. So this must be some kind of uh, interesting place where these vehicles are, are there. Um, <clears throat> so what we did first, uh, first of all, we want, we, we, we want to know whether this policy had an impact on air quality. Um, so what we did was, because we know that uh, this policy essentially is to vary the number of vehicles allowed to be on the road on a working weekday. Um, so we could test, uh, was the PM concentration higher on a uh, four nine day? Uh, because if you have a four nine day, meaning you're primarily only restricting uh, vehicles ending with the digit uh, uh, nine, right? Because there are no four cars. So um, you will have more vehicles allowed to be on the road. And we want to, first of all, we want to see whether air quality responded to these days because there are more cars. And uh, you know, casual evidence in Beijing suggests uh, that uh, you know, on a 4-9 day, you'd better prepare to spend more time on the road. And we will uh, show data. Um, but first of all, we did a, a regression. We just uh, look at uh, you know, that day's air quality, PM10 concentration. Um, the number, uh, whether um, you know, it is a 4-9 day or not. But instead, we actually didn't uh, just uh, put a 4-9 day to see whether there's a significant variation among other groups of numbers. We actually uh, put uh, the other uh, combinations except 4 and 9. And we had some covariates um, that affects uh, air quality, primarily uh, climate condi uh, weather conditions. And we have day of week fixed effects and a month of year fixed effects just to capture the natural variation in traffic demand across different uh, time. So this is our result. Um, you know, we controlled rain, snow, fog, temperature, uh, humidity, wind, and their uh, quadratic forms. When, and, so, uh, and the first two specification, we also looked at uh, the, uh, the previous days, included the previous days concentration. Uh, oh, we actually included all of them in, in different, uh, just in different form, log and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, regular form. And uh, in our uh, specifications, four specifications, we found no evidence that uh, these other number concentrations uh, actually had a, a statistically uh, significant uh, difference in air quality in PM concentration. In fact, one would think that a 4-9 day would have higher concentration. Namely, one would think this, these estimates are, should be primarily negative, right? Because these days there are fewer cars allowed to be on the road. One should think these should be negative, but in, but it turns out most of them are uh, not only insignificant, but also had, had the unexpected sign. So that, that's very interesting, because um, that uh, seems to point to Davis' story of adaptation, behavioral adaptation. But, uh, but we are not sure, because um, we think um, <coughs> they are, they are, we, we included our test of adaptation, but we didn't find evidence supporting that. There are possible explanations to this, to this finding, and uh, we had four hypotheses. And the first one is the driving restriction had, had no impact on traffic because there's only you know, a small number, sort of a proportion, relatively small proportion of cars uh, sort of uh, prohibited from entering the road. And in particular, our analysis is not comparing before after. We're comparing sort of a days where the restriction is more strict and days the restrictions were more slightly relaxed, right? Because we are not comparing right before and after. Um, so in particular, behavior adaptation, for example, people may got second car. Um, once sort of a, they, they might got some, 
sort of uh, uh, evidence that the government is going to make this policy permanent. And so they got second car, and likely the second car is dirtier. Um, and the plate number, um, people may uh, sort of register their car uh, with an ending number of nine. That's possible to do in Beijing because in Beijing, the government, when you register your car, the government randomly generates 10 groups of numbers, plate numbers, and you can pick one. Um, uh, that, that's also why it's very difficult to find a four uh, in the plates because you get to pick from 10 groups. Uh, but people can play with the rule by uh, finding a car that's um, ending with nine so that they could uh, sort of uh, they could uh, use other days. Uh, they, they could enjoy the better traffic on, on, um, on other days. Uh, and on the four nine day, they just uh, you know, have an alternative plan. And the second hypothesis is traffic's if effect on PM10 is trivial. Um, so although it might have an impact on traffic, but uh, traffic is only one source of air quality, and there could be uh, lots of reasons one believe that uh, it, you know, PM10 may not reflect the traffic uh, variation. And thirdly, naturally, scientists would say, you know, we have fancy models. We know that uh, these particulates hover in the air for a long time. The finer. The, the longer time. So, um, so daily comparisons may be plagued by time lag. And uh, finally, uh, our final hypothesis um, was that there might be more complicated or unexpected traffic air quality relationship. So, so the first hypothesis, um, it didn't affect the travel. That was an easy one to, to, for our study. Um, to sort of uh, to examine, but it actually has not been examined by any previous study because it's it's really inconvenient to get the traffic data uh, in any sensible way. Fortunately, we get this. Um, Beijing has established with the help of um, countries uh, uh, like the U.S. Um, I mean institutions in the U.S. and Europe. They established a traffic monitoring system and constantly updating the traffic performance in Beijing City. Uh, it's real time. So we got this interesting data of traffic condition uh, in Beijing uh, uh, during the uh, uh, sub-period of all the air quality data we had, uh, a long enough sub-period. So, so the <coughs> we, we, we selected this transportation performance index um, it's, it's based on a weighted uh, sort of uh, calculation based on traffic weights of different uh, lengths. And uh, what they did was uh, the, the larger this index, the, the slower the traffic. So um, this is the variation of the data we you used uh, in, 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 our, in our study. Primarily we used the non-holiday weekdays uh, uh, from January 2009 to April 2011, and you can see Beijing's traffic uh, uh, doesn't seem to be too bad because there's only, there are only just a, a small number of days in severe congested. But uh, uh, once you know what's behind uh, sort of these criteria, you will realize that even light, light congestion is considered quite slow uh, in Los Angeles standard. So um, I'm not going through these details, but just to show you this, this data, that's, that's sort of the key Sort of a sort of a difference of our study compared to uh, other studies. So similarly, we regress the traffic uh, of each day uh, by averaging the morning peak and the afternoon peak on this constant, just like before, and the number restricted the number and uh, some uh, weather conditions that may uh, affect the travel and uh, these uh, fixed effects. What we found was very, very sort of a obvious difference between four nine day and any other days, um, uh, sort of non-holiday non weekdays, um, just as our casual, casual evidence sort of by, by you know, asking Beijing residents. During the whole study period, we found this very significant difference. Namely, um, <coughs> this TPI is bigger when you have a four nine day meaning there are more cars uh, on the road. So the traffic is worse when there are more cars on the road. So definitely it affects traffic 
Um, and uh, now the question becomes, how do you sort of explain why traffic is significantly improved or, 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 or deteriorated? And while the air, air quality had no impact. Um, so, so, of course, just uh, you know, another thing is adaptation. Um, previous studies looking at adaptation, they had other data, such as whether people register cars in Mexico City, whether fuel demand uh, in the city changed. Um, it, it, it was a little difficult for us to get, uh, to get those data. But we think you know, the most uh, sort of a direct evidence should appear uh, if it appears in adaptation sort of traffic travel behavior should appear in the traffic regression. So we added this um, sort of interaction term between the number 49 and, and the time uh, or time trend. Uh, what we found was that uh, there's no significant uh, change over, over these uh, about, I think, about, about two years time, ru very roughly two years time. Sorry, I forgot the exact uh, sort of uh, time. Um, so uh, over two years, we didn't find that uh, sort of uh, this, this difference between these days and this, this 4-9 day had any sort of a meaningful change uh, over time. So <clears throat> the second hypothesis uh, was that uh, traffic's effect on PM10 is trivial. Um, this actually tr is, is not, a, not a very sort of a very easy to, 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 to sort of uh, to examine. Uh, but we had other scientific evidence in general in the U.S. Uh, as a country, half of the PM10 emissions from road dust in 2002. So that's, that's published in the peer-reviewed um, uh, report. Um, and in the EU, uh, quite consistent, transport dominated PM10 because our dependent variable is PM10 concentration, right? So the dominated PM10 emissions in 1990, but dropped to about 40% by 1999 due to technological advances. So in the in the um, it's it's not just in the U.S. It's um, it's it's in in the EU, uh, and also in the EU they found that uh, um, traffic-related PM represents a larger, uh, even larger source of PM10 in urban areas, um, you know, like like uh, Paris, London. Uh, Etc. because heavy traffic compared to the region. So for Beijing, the sci scientists haven't uh, uh, sort of uh, produced uh, uh, too many sort of uh, mutually supporting evidence. But what we found was Beijing's PM10 comes from multiple sources with the importance of road transport rising over time. Uh, we used a relatively sort of a mid-range Estimate that says um, you know 28 percent of Beijing's PM10 was from uh, road transportation. That's to, uh, 2010, so roughly uh, sort of uh, in the earlier time of our study. And uh, of course, there are higher estimates recently if you search, uh, if you Google. So first, uh, uh, back of the envelope calculation. Uh, we, of course, this is just uh, something very very. Um, uh, Unreliable, I would say. Um, it can be. So if the last digits of all car plates are ev evenly distributed in numbers 1 to 9, except for 4, uh, the car, uh, th there can be up to around 15% more drivable cars on a 4-9 restriction, uh, sort of a 4-9 day compared to other restricted days. So um, <coughs> naively, if it's 28% of the share, uh, so um, a 15% difference is 4.2 difference in the emission, assuming cars emit the same amount. Okay, so a 4.2 difference, it turns out, uh, is unlikely to be missed in the more than, it's actually about 115 weeks of data. So each week we compare the 4.9 day to all other days, and we missed this, okay? And statistically, it's really hard to believe because if you calculate the power, it's nearly 99%. If we assume there's a 4.2 difference in emissions, and we give it a very large standard error of 10 percentage points. It's not 10% of 4.2, it's 10 percentage points. So we st in the two-tailed test, it's not one tail, 
uh, at 95% confidence level, it's almost impossible to miss it in our comparison. Okay, over 100 weeks comparison. Sort of we repeatedly compare, you know, four nine day to all other days. It's almost impossible to miss that. Of course, this is very sort of, uh, and also the signs are different. So there are no very strong good way to compare it. But we did have a weak test. So if traffic PM uh, or particulates from traffic is a more stable source than others, because you, people living in Beijing know. Uh, in Beijing, there are two important uh, sort of, uh, you know, in the winter, the, the air quality is really bad. And uh, uh, otherwise, there are two types of days. One is windy days, and the second is uh, uh, smoggy days. So, um, so if one thinks that traffic demand is relatively sort of uh, consistent over time, but the other things may vary a lot over time, so what, what we can expect we would expect that uh, um, sort of uh, if you look at uh, sort of uh, look at the l more clear uh, better days, namely the PM concentration is lower. Um, so this is the quantile regression. One would expect that uh, this traffic, uh, this restrictions difference would be more sort of a uh, sort of a more uh, would be stronger. Okay, would be more uh, sort of uh, going toward our expected direction. But the issue is that we don't find uh, we don't find any change. In fact, these these magnitudes are bigger. And in fact, even for this five zero days, you find it's uh, it's not only big but also statistically significant compared to compared to the dirtier uh, dirtier days. Meaning there are lots of different sources of pollutants entering into the air, uh, pushing up the. Uh, air, uh, PM10 concentration. So that that is uh, uh, that is a surprise. Uh, also um, showing that uh, it does not seem that uh, it's really sort of a because traffic uh, uh, difference cannot be picked up by the by the um, by the um, by the air quality. Instead, uh, this previous found pattern is even more. Sort of a, a salient when we um, when we sort of a, if we assume if we accept that traffic PM is a more stable source compared to other it's, uh, compared to other sources. So it's uh, so primarily we were talking about this. So the third hypothesis um, there are uh, a time lag between emission and concentration, which is very naturally uh, one would uh, expect that, and if. Uh, in, Imagine there's a time lag. You would you would see that maybe four nine day has bad pollutants, lots of pollutants, but uh, it reflects on your reading meter. It's going to be on a five zero day because that is the, always the day after the four nine day or any day after it. If five zero turns out uh, to be uh, in the next Monday, you would have a Saturday right after the Friday, which is the four nine day. Right? So one would expect that there is a specific pattern of how this translates, sort of a time lag going to translate into the relationship, a lag between the traffic and the air quality. So what we, what we did, uh, we did a, a, a few different things. Uh, first, the small, sort of a, we, let's see if we restricted the sample to a subsample um, with bigger expected a 5, 0 coefficient. As I said, if five nine uh, five zero day immediately follows four nine day, uh, it happens you know as long as they are not separated by a weekend. Uh, we should expect this this effect to so, uh, to to show in our regression. But the uh, but the so we restrict our sample to 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 all the weeks where um, where five five zero day immediately follows. Uh, four nine day, so that we should expect this five zero day would have a significant uh, sort of a uh, uh, bigger uh, significant bigger uh, uh, bigger uh, reading in PM ten, but uh, the we didn't find uh, it's it's significant. It's uh, it's 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 positive, but it's not uh, statistically significant. Uh, we also looked at uh, other specifications, but generally, 
uh, is positive, it could be quite small. It could be quite small depending on uh, what we are looking at, but, uh, but it's not uh, significant. So, <clears throat> and the secondly, if we just uh, look at uh, how sort of whether there's a time lag, a convenient sample is look at Saturday's PM concentration and how that uh, reflect uh, the previous day's traffic. So the question is, does Friday's driving restrictions affect uh, Saturday's PM? So what we did was to single out the four nine days. Let's see whether the dependent variable is Saturday's, uh, Saturday's reading, because on Saturday there's no restriction. There's no restriction on driving. So one should expect uh, these you know, Saturdays are quite consistent over time. So, uh, so for those weeks, the Friday is 4-9 day. We found that uh, the Saturday shows no statistically significant sign of uh, worse uh, PM concentration. Namely, there's no sign that showing there's a time lag at all, uh, you know, or robust time lag. So um, <clears throat> more generally, let's see whether the PMT or responds to um, traffic uh, uh, T minus one. And so we run our full sample regression and uh, uh, we included the uh, traffic uh, index um, and its quadratic term of, of the today's, um, you know, dependent variable is today's PM concentration and the uh, regressor includes the today's, uh, today's uh, traffic condition and uh, yesterday's traffic condition. So we we, we first uh, controlled uh, the today's traffic condition, and then yesterday's, and uh, then we just uh, you know look at uh, uh, leave uh, leave today's traffic condition away. Uh, the issue is that uh, you know the only thing significant is uh, the current day's traffic. Uh, the day previous, uh, the traffic doesn't matter. Okay, so there's no no sign showing that uh, traffic uh, uh, of the previous day uh, gonna affect uh, um, air quality. Um, no matter you control or uh, today's traffic or not. So the last hypothesis, which we think uh, is likely um, and uh, kind of interesting, that's, uh, that's an ingredient that uh, you need to publish a paper. So um, we think uh, it's possible that better traffic um, can produce more pollution. So first of all, um, Total traffic emission can be sort of uh, uh, mechanically uh, separated into two factors. One is the emission factor, right, um, per vehicle mile traveled. Um, what's the emission, uh, amount of emission, times the total distance traveled, the traffic volume, right? So um, the emission factor um, decreases as speed improves in the city. Um, you know, in the city, typically your speed does not uh, go to all the way to the other other end where you know it's too fast, so it consumes starts to consume more fuel. So the emission factor is kind of monotonically decreasing as you increase as you make traffic better. Okay, per vehicle kilometer or mile traveled. On the other hand, the total distance traveled, uh, VKT vehicle kilometer traveled, or volume or flow increases with speed during hypercongestion. Okay, that's a highway uh, sort of, uh, uh, that's more commonly sort of uh, perceived as a, as a characteristic of highway traffic. But uh, in fact, uh, there's also um, uh, some uh, sort of uh, earlier theoretical and empirical uh, sort of uh, uh, studies in traffic engineering showing that uh, at a network level in the city, it also has sort of this, this hyper-congestion uh, problem where when you have very bad traffic, you will find as traffic speed improves, uh, the flow improves too. So there's uh, this, this <coughs> pattern. So this is the emission factor. Um, it decreases as you increase speed uh, in cities. Um, and this is the traffic volume. The traffic volume um, sort of before it, uh, before the speed sort of becomes relatively smooth, the traffic volume increase as the speed increases. Okay, so that is a famous sort of a backward bending part of the speed volume curve. So 
And in Beijing, uh, many people sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, joke about Beijing's traffic, saying, you know, every weekday Beijing is just a, a big parking lot. And um, so we, there, it's, it's very likely Beijing, actually, Beijing's traffic is in this zone where hyper congestion happens um, before it actually enters to the more smoother uh, stage. And uh, essentially, if you think about the traffic uh, driving restriction, it is the moving of traffic from, from very slow toward a, a, a smoother uh, part of this curve. That means, although the emission factor may be decreasing, the traffic volume may be increasing, uh, sort of uh, due to this increase in, the, in, in, in speed. So, and, and uh, we did actually fund this nonlinear relationship by uh, looking at uh, sort of air quality and the traffic speed. Um, of course, um, we, can, we don't have a traffic volume dependent variable. If we do, that would be much sort of easier to directly answer this question. So we did this regression, uh, air quality on, on traffic uh, performance. Uh, it's basically speed, network speed, uh, um, and, and other, other sort of uh, control variables. What we found is exactly this uh, nonlinear quadratic relationship uh, between traffic speed. Okay? Um, at the beginning, when you increase traffic speed, you actually contribute to this PM concentration. But uh, after your speed reached to a certain point, you will find that your, um, as speed increases, uh, the total image, uh, the, the traffic, uh, the, the air quality increases. And by varying all these different, uh, you know, using different uh, um, <coughs> sort of uh, specifications, we found this uh, seems to be a robust result where you have a nonlinear quadratic relationship between, between these two variables. So, uh, this is the conclusion, very simple. Um, we, our result suggests that better traffic uh, not necessarily uh, equal better air quality. Uh, small improvements in traffic condition uh, in a hyper-congested city may result in less delay, but worse air quality. Um, at least uh, you know, here, of course, we only look at the PM10, not other things, but uh, there's reason to, to, to to believe that uh, you know other other major criteria pollutants would perform would do the same thing, um, <clears throat> and of course there are lots of lots of limitations to this study. Uh, for example, we are unable to uh, directly test whether the one day per week driving restriction reduced the PM concentration in Beijing, because we only compared within this driving this scheme. Okay, only compared to four nine days and other days. So we suggest that. Roughly up to 50% of the dose of treatment, uh, you know, on other days you have about, let's say, 20% of vehicles off the road. On a 4-9 day, you have about 10% of vehicles off the road. So the roughly 50% of the dose may have little or even adverse air quality effect uh, on, uh, <coughs> of Beijing. So that's our, that's our con uh, conclusion, and I think that's... That, that's it. Thank you very much. A little bit about the, um, the monitors and measures that you're using on the air quality side. Um, it's Beijing Municipal and uh, EPB, Environmental Protection Bureau. It, it based on all the uh, monitors, air quality monitors. Um, they have, they do the 24 hour average concentration of primary pollutants. Uh, from 12 noon. Interestingly, uh, so let's say today's average air quality, they reported from yesterday's noon to today's noon. Um, I think it's reasonable because that reflects, uh, you know, the majority of the pollutants sort of, uh, sort of affecting uh, both morning, tr uh, morning and afternoon, what people breathe. They think uh, this is, these readings are more sort of uh, relevant to uh, today, so to reflect uh, the overall air quality of a day. Uh, but we did do, um, so what, uh, 
Um, so we, uh, to match the time period of our TPI, because TPI is based on sort of uh, the morning traffic and the afternoon traffic. So we believe that uh, there is a delay. So the, this today's afternoon traffic actually going to reflect on tomorrow's sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, air quality reading. So we averaged in, in our final result, we averaged today's PM10 and the following day's PM10 concentration to do this. Um, you might be worried about this. So we um, actually did, uh, um, so also, we, we does not change. We just used their definition. We didn't find a significant change in our results. So it does not seem to actually produce anything sort of, uh, um, sort of uh, can, can affect uh, our conclusion, even the time lag, because in the time lag, it's still, you know, it doesn't really affect it. And, and we, uh, we uh, in the future, we might want to do station level analysis, looking at the heterogeneities in the city, um, just like one of the working papers done um, earlier. Uh, but uh, for this paper, we thought it's a little too much to present. Um, but so we used a uh, city level uh, reading. So they, they report, the government report API. So the API is an index, but it's primarily PM10. Almost all the days are just based on PM10 reading. So we use the API to sort of go back to refer the PM10. And that's being done by other researchers in environmental science. I'm not sure I would really expect to detect the sort of differences that you're looking at with PM10, particularly in an urban context, right? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of road dust that's out there, but yes. a lot of those are rural roads when we yes. talk about um, that level of particulate. If you only look at the source apportionment of, let's say, how much PM10 or PM2.5 is from tailpipe, you would expect, uh, uh, what do you think? You know, um, it's really a small portion, in particular in Beijing, where it's dry, it's, it's dirty, lots of construction going on, lots of uh, coal burning, uh, and lots of you know, coal plants in the region. Uh, but the thing is that uh, these studies, these studies actually take into sort of, remember what we measure is ambient uh, PM10. It picks up from all the sources after they are blended, they're, uh, after its deposition, after its re-blending. That's why actually we find that uh, PM10 is contributed, uh, is contributed from sort of a traffic. So it's, it's not just a tailpipe, it's also, you know, even the, so when traffic is better, one would expect it will affect how the dirts get, get, so get. It, just, it kind of makes me wonder about whether or not you might actually see more effect if you were looking at a different type of. Yeah, this is. I, unfortunately, if, you know, we, we don't have a very strong sort of a response to, to this, but uh, anecdotally, in China and even even in other cities like in Seoul, before their um, before their uh, during their uh, summer Olympics in 1988, around that time, they actually had to to improve their air, air quality. A very important thing they did was to spray the roads, and to spray the roads doesn't mean that traffic generated these uh, these these air pollutants directly, but the traffic is going to blend it. Into the into the air, and that happens in China too. Sort of uh, for for big uh, events, sometimes they need to spray it more often, in particular in northern cities. So, I, it's it's very legit concern, um, and I agree. This is the weak weak link. We um, we couldn't have a very strong response to this, um, but we think uh, it's more likely that our fourth hypothesis is true, uh, or maybe it's a combination. Has anyone actually sort of done a simulation? Um, uh, you can pretty much bound this, right? With the maximum possible change in traffic that could happen uh -huh. and simulate it. And, uh, you know, that might give you a bound as to what could you possibly say in terms of PM10 emissions. And I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, of course. The if if would be the bottom up. Relative to yeah. the total amount. I, uh, but that may be another.
Well, I'm not an expert on that, obviously, but uh, based on our knowledge, there's no sort of such detailed simulation model, uh, in particular in China, anywhere in China. They, um, environmental engineers, what they did mostly is to play with the monitor data uh, uh, for different uh, policy interventions, like a natural experiment. I, I'm not aware that they have a transportation or traffic air quality combined model. Uh, even they have their model, I would say, their reliability. They might consider the, their model very, very sophisticated, but I, I, I think there could be lots of black box inside. In PM10 as the measure of air quality, I'm just wondering whether uh, you think or all the researchers in the literature review think PM10 is better than PM2.5? Uh, PM2.5 in, in particular is correlated with tailpipe emissions. Uh, more than PM10. But again, PM10, uh, you know, probably different from what we think, although it's not all sourced from, uh, from, from traffic, but uh, it can be affected by traffic in a very significant way yeah, via other physical uh, uh, processes. I have a question. So when you analysis the traffic, mm -hmm. like traffic condition, you guys, it's hard for you guys to find the exactly like from the government the database about the traffic volume, traffic level of service, and to assume the exactly traffic trip more accurately. This index by itself, I think, it's a very good uh, measurement of, of speed because it's a network level with thousands of links speed weighted by traffic volume, average traffic volume and you combine it. I'm not sure whether, it, let's say, if I have four or five readings and I-10 readings, does that represent Los Angeles? It's actually not so, uh, not so simple. So I think, uh, well, of course, you know, um, this is like a, a, a data source that's not verified uh, uh, sort of uh, sufficiently by other studies. But, uh, but personally, I think this, this, this speed performance index is not a bad uh, is not a bad uh, uh, variable because it's a network-wide um, weighted average. Thank you.